I want to thank, begin by thanking Mary and, uh, for the opportunity to come visit and talk about our science. Um, and uh, I look forward to the rest of the talks of this meeting. Uh, the topic I'm going to tell you about today is, um, is a little bit off what is the central theme uh, of this particular symposium, because I'm going to be the uh, abiological representative. We're going to be talking about synthetic materials, completely synthetic materials, as protein capture agents, peptide capture agents. As the title suggests, we're going to be talking about synthetic polymers for selective capture of peptides and proteins. I've organized this talk to give you some insight as to how this project evolved and how we step by step came to the appreciation that we believe that we can in fact make completely synthetic organic polymers that can perform in certain circumstances, okay, comparable to antibodies themselves. And we'll talk about some potential applications uh, as well. Uh, once again, the overall objective, and this is a project that started approximately four and a half years ago in my group, uh, was to pose the question, is it possible to create synthetic entities capable of capturing uh, uh, selected peptides and proteins? A whole range uh, from small peptidic molecules, toxins such as melatonin, uh, to human IgG, okay? So that was the question that we posed uh, some four and a half or five years ago. I come from a chemistry background, so this is a question or a problem in the area of molecular recognition. And if we think of uh, sort of classical problems or challenges in uh, molecular recognition, this is once again just restating the challenge. Uh, can we develop a general strategy, not a specific strategy, but a general strategy for preparing synthetic polymers with antibody-like affinity and selectivity for peptides and proteins? As I indicated, this is a problem in molecular recognition. So from a chemist's standpoint, we think about molecular recognition and how it works in relatively simple systems. And then as we move on to the more complicated challenges that I'll tell you about today, this is a quote from Jean-Marie Lane in terms of defining what molecular recognition is. It simply implies a structurally well-defined pattern of intermolecular interactions. This has been a focus of chemistry for some 20 or 25 years, the design of small molecules capable of binding to specific biological molecules. The reverse case I've shown here, and then much of our inspiration, of course, comes from biological systems. Uh, this is a peptide, volinomycin, which has an exquisite capacity to selectively bind potassium. It also undergoes a conformational change, presenting a hydrophobic exterior to the external wall, allowing that potassium complex uh, to pass through a cell membrane. Uh, this works and is selective for potassium because it has a strategic three-dimensional array of complementary functional groups, okay, and a cavity capable of accommodating just a potassium, not a sodium ion. The problem that we're talking about, however, is a far more complicated one. Uh, the previous problem, as I indicated, uh, is maybe compatible with drug design. That is, with a known receptor, the crafting of a small organic molecule, okay, to in fact fit precisely into an enzyme active site to inhibit or modulate its activity. Protein-protein interactions, which is what the challenge is, is one is looking for synthetic materials that are capable of capturing biological macromolecules. Protein-protein interactions are far more complicated. They involve uh, rather extensive interactions across reasonably large surface areas, as shown here. So we don't have a single sweet spot 